in the last lecture of uh, punctuation marks we discussed about the uses of uh, the colon semicolon question mark exclamation mark and the dash and now let us continue the same topic with the, the punctuation mark hyphen For instance, when I say passer by man of war, Jake of all trades, so we use the hyphen to connect the parts of compound word. Whenever we have a compound word, we can connect them with the use of a hyphen. Okay. One more use of hyphen is that it is used to connect parts of a word divided at the end of a line. For example, whenever it is not possible for us to write the full word within the same line and we have to divide the word or we have to break up the word and write it in the next line then we can use the hyphen to show continuity between these words. Suppose we are writing the spelling of individual and we are not able to write the whole spelling at the end of the line and we could write only I and D I for individual and cannot write uh, DUAL after ND then we can write the DUAL in the next line by uh, adding a hyphen just before it so we are all aware I think so let's take an example to prove the same point one day I went to the Jew and I saw some any and now I'm not able to write the word animals so I would simply put a hyphen before the remaining spelling like I M A L S okay so in this way we can use a hyphen uh, to connect parts of a word divided at the end of a line okay now let's come to the next punctuation mark that is parenthesis well parenthesis or double dashes are used to separate from the main part of the sentence a phrase or clause which does not grammatically belong to it So when I say he gained from heaven, it was all he wished a friend. A remarkable instance of this kind of courage, call it if you please, resolute will is given in the history of Baba. A remarkable instance of this kind
of courage call it if you please resolute will is given in the history of babar here in this sentence a remarkable instance of this kind of courage here in this sentence a remarkable instance of this kind of courage then call it if you please resolute will is given in the history of babar in this sentence call it if you please this is unnecessary and it does not belong to the rest of the sentence so we have separated this part of the sentence from rest of the sentence by using the double dashes so whenever we have some sentences in which uh, some phrases or clauses are given which you the, which do not grammatically belong to the main sentence then we can separate them by using double dashes in the sentence just before those unnecessary or unconnected phrases or clauses okay now next punctuation mark is the apostrophe we all must be aware what an apostrophe is the apostrophe is used to show the omission of a letter or letters such as we omit o in don't and we have used apostrophe to omit o in the spelling don't okay we also use apostrophe in the word ever to omit v from the word okay when we say i have we omit h a okay and to omit h a we use the apostrophe the apostrophe can also be used in the genitive case of nouns like when i say it is and omit i from the spelling it is so we can say it's for it is okay we can say uh, to form the relationship between two persons we use the apostrophe okay like the this the boy's father girl's mother we use toy so in this manner we use the apostrophe to show the relationship between two nouns okay the apostrophe can also be used to form the plural of letters and figures for example when i say dot your eyes and cross your t's dot your eyes and cross your t's add two fives and four twos now let us come to the uses of capital letters when do we use the capital letters most of us are aware about uh, when should we use the capital letters but still we make mistakes 
so to avoid these silly mistakes let us know when the capital letters are used so let us begin capitalization or the use of capital letters well capital letters are used to begin a sentence this is the first use of capital letters whenever we have to begin a new sentence we have to use the capital letter in the beginning of the first word okay so the first letter of the of a new sentence should be capital so whenever we begin a new sentence we have to use the capital letter in the beginning of the sentence okay for example when i say we should be sincere to our work here in this sentence we is the first word with which we are beginning the sentence and the first letter of we is w so we have written w as the capital letter so whenever we begin a sentence the first letter of the of that sentence should be in capitals okay one more use of capital letters or when should we use the capital letters is that capital letters is used to begin each phrase line of poetry most of us have definitely read the poems and uh, in the poems each line each fresh line begins with a capital letter even if they are connected okay so when i say let's take the example of a of the lines of a poem the world is too much with us written by William Wordsworth The first line of that poem is the world is too much with us Let or soon we lay waste our powers in getting and spending these are the two lines first two lines of the poem the world is too much with us and uh, to begin each fresh line of the poem we have to use the capital letter capital letters are also used to to begin all proper nouns and adjectives derived from them for example when i say delhi d will be in capital rama r will be in capital africa a will be in capital in africa okay shakespeare s will be in capital in shakespeare and when i say shakespeare in this is the adjective of the word shakespeare when i say african the a will also be in the capital letter african is the adjectival form of the noun africa indian is the adjectival form of india okay in this manner we use the capital letter then capital letters are also used for all nouns and pronouns which indicate the deity
so whenever we have the word god or goddess in the sentence and uh, when it is expressed from that sentence that god is one and we are talking about god as a one okay then we can write g in capital of god and goddess but when we have god in plural form then we do not write g in capital letter to indicate that deity okay so when i say oh lord oh god g will be in capital letter when i say god is one or god is everywhere g will be in the capital letter even if we are using god in the middle of the sentence or in the end of the sentence when i say i believe in god g will be in capital letter but when i use god as the plural then i want use capital letter in the beginning of the word god okay when i say roman gods are praised by many poet by many poets in this sentence we have taken god as different gods and so we have not used the capital letter g before god okay one more use of the capitalization is that the pronoun i and the interjection o are always written in capital letter okay i as a pronoun is always written in the capital letter whether we are writing it in the beginning of the sentence or in the middle of the sentence or at the end of the sentence and o interjection is also used in the capital letter okay for example when i say you and i are best friends here in this sentence i is given in the middle of the sentence but as i is the pronoun here so we have used the word i in the capital letter okay so in this manner we use different punctuation marks in different situations okay and the sound knowledge of this punctuation mark is very much essential to improve our writing skill and uh, by knowing their uses we do not we never get confused in whatever we are writing and when we use these punctuation marks in a right manner then it looks quite impressive okay and it uh, puts an impression in our writing so uh, we should be very much accurate in uh, the uses of punctuation mark so that we do not make any mistake okay